Hello everyone and a very very uh, happy and joyous welcome to you all and a special Holi hai to my young friends. Today I am telling you some interesting stories about Holi which is the festival of color, the festival of love and the festival of spring. In fact, uh, it is probably one of the most awaited festivals we have in the country. And today I'm going to tell you uh, some mythological tales. We are going to see the traditions of Holi, the science behind the traditions of Holi, how we celebrate it in different parts of the country and abroad. And then how can you and I celebrate an eco-friendly Holi? So when you think of Holi, you think of spring and you think of color because all around you it is flowers and lots and lots of um, nice colors. The season is good which is probably the best time of the year in terms of climate in our country. And the next thing I wanted to tell you was about why we don't celebrate Holi on a particular day. We don't have a fixed date. Like most Indian festivals, the date of all of our festivals, including Holi, keeps on changing. So we have it sometimes in February, sometimes we have it in March. That's because we follow the lunisolar calendar in India. We follow the movements of the sun as well as the moon. So Holi actually takes place on the last full moon of the month of Fagun. Full moon is when the moon is at its biggest and it's called Purima. So it happens on the Fagun Purnima. Now the next question is that where does Holi get its name from? So for this we get to go to the Narad Puran. Now here there is a story of the demon king Hiranyakashyap and his son Pralat. The story goes like this that Hiranyakashyap got a boon from Lord Brahma saying that you know he could not be killed by a human or an animal. He could not be killed in day or night, on land, on sea or on air. So he started thinking I am immortal. He became powerful which also made him very arrogant. He started forcing people that you know instead of gods you have to worship me. Now his son used to follow Lord Vishnu and he refused to follow his father. And then what ensued was he tried many different ways to get rid of his son and when nothing really worked he roped in his sister Holika. Now Holika also had a boon from Brahma and her boon was that she could never get burnt in fire. So what did she do? She took little Pralad on her lap, sat inside a bonfire and guess what? She forgot that this boon cannot be used for bad purposes because of which she got burnt and Pralad was totally safe. So this is where the name Holi comes from from the Holika and the burning of the Holika fire. So this festival actually lasts for two days. The first day in the evening or the night we have the Holika Dahan which is when we light the bonfire and the next day is called Dhulendi which is the Rangvali Holi where we play with colors which is the most fun part of this festival. Now what is really lovely about this festival is that it is celebrated Pan India. Mostly it is uh, a lot about fun and frolic. There is not too much of a religion or a ritualistic aspect to it. It is celebrated by all age groups. So whether you are a child or an adult or a really grown up older generation, you can all take part in it. All the castes take part in it. All the communities take part in it. And there is a very nice story I wanted to share with you from Mughal times. So you know the Mughals actually came to India from Central Asia. They were Muslim but they really loved this festival of Holi. In fact, they used to call it Eid e Gulabi. And what was nice about this festival is on this day you could go up to the emperor and really smear color on his face. Anybody could do it. You were a commoner or nobility. It was a free for all. So there is a lot of equality in this festival that I really wanted to highlight. Now the next thing is why do we celebrate with color? Now the color comes from the most popular figure of this festival which is Lord Krishna. So the mytho mythological story behind this is that Krishna was born dark skinned or blue skinned and he wasn't happy with his skin color and he went up to his mom and he said why is Radha who was his friend and consort why doesn't she have the same uh, skin color as me and his mother said why don't you take some color and you just color her, color her whatever color you wish. 
so this is exactly what he did he colored her with his favorite colors and of, of course he is known to also be a prankster so he would trouble all the gopis and his get together with his friends the gwalas and have a really merry time now each color that we use in holi has a symbolism so red is the color for fertility which is why a lot of times people wear red sindoor right and then what else uh, green is a color for new beginnings blue is the color of krishna and yellow is the color of spring like i just showed you a minute ago so the reason another reason another tale for having started using colors during holi actually comes from ancient bengal so they were the god vaishnavas who used to go to the krishna temples and smear the god with red sindoor and then with the prasad they would take this red sindoor and smear it on everybody else's faces as well which is another way they say that this tradition picked up now i want to tell you that why is this festival called the festival of love so here's another myth they say that lord shiva was deep in trance the day was basant panchmi he was meditating and in his deep 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 meditation along came lord kamdev he was the god of love and he was told to wake shiva up so what did he do he took his bow and arrow and he hit the arrow of love like a cupid towards lord shiva and what happened was lord shiva woke up his third eye which you see here his third eye actually opened up and out came this burst of light and kama was burned to ashes now his wife was devastated and she prayed for 40 days continuously in the hope that he comes back to life and then lord shiva out of compassion he kind of felt bad about what he had done and he brought kama back to life so this is why it is also celebrated as a festival of love in fact in south india they call it rang panchmi south india doesn't celebrate holi like north india with lots and lots of colors they actually have something called the kama dahanam where they actually pray and they have these stories where they talk about kama and rati so they are the ones who are worshiped there it's also considered a very auspicious day for engagements and weddings to get finalized because it seems according to valmiki sita and ram got married on holi okay so this is a very interesting story i wanted to talk to you about next i want to talk to you about the actual rituals and the significance behind them so when we talk about holika dahan what is holika dahan we light a bonfire and everybody goes around the bonfire people say we do five rounds some people say we do seven rounds so why do we do it firstly the bonfire is actually symbolic of burning the holika which represents the evil and the bad deeds inside us so we try and burn it and we get it out of our system that's the first symbolism and agni which is fire in india is symbol of purification and cleansing which is why we walk around the fire now a very interesting fact i wanted to talk to you about was that you know winter goes into summer and holi is spring which comes right in between which is a transition season so what happens in transition season we all get sick we get allergies we get cough cold viral fever right so when you walk around the fire the temperature in that area is a little higher and all the bacteria and viruses get obliterated or they get killed so that's one of the reasons why we walk around the holika fire now what goes inside the fire okay so inside the fire they say that they make uh, put cow dung and uh, a lot of us are going to be like you why do they put cow dung in the fire well cow dung also has a significance the significance being that cow dung actually takes up less space it's a very economical biofuel and it burns slowly which means it lasts longer than wood and the smoke that comes out of uh, cow dung is actually So that's the reason why cow dung is used and there are a lot of other good things that go into it so we have coconut we have different kinds of wood we have salt which absorbs negativity and what else do we have we even put the grains of the newly harvested crop that we have inside it and when that gets roasted that's also really given back to people as prasad that's also considered to be very very healthy and beneficial so i wanted to point this out because a lot of us think we do this but what is the reason behind it right now what happens is the next day when the holika fire is totally burned down the ashes are also called vibhuti they are considered very very beneficial again and they are smeared on people's foreheads as well as prasad
Now, no festival in India is complete without food. Each festival has its own food and why should Holi be any different? So we have gujiyas, we have kachoris, we have malpuas here and all very yummy, all deep fried, all full of sugar, full of calories. And this here is Puran Poli, which is in the western part of India, Maharashtra, had with ghee. Ghee is very good for us. It makes our bones very strong. And remember I told you that this is transition season. The body is adjusting. So what the ancients did was they put in some song and dance into the festival. So the color is already here. The rituals are already there. The song and dance is basically to energize you and get you up. You are going away from lethargy to becoming a more active person. So when you've done all the dance and singing, you're going to be tired. So what better than to give you cooling foods? So we have dahi vada, which is used pretty much eaten all over India. And the most famous, famous thandai of Holi. So thandai is made with milk. They put in cooling spices. They put in nuts. Sometimes they put in bhang, which is intoxicating. Not for everybody. But on the whole, Tandai is a really great coolant. It brings down the body temperature, especially when it gets really warm around Holi. Now, the next thing I wanted to talk to you about is all the colors. So all the colors we use now are all synthetic, right? But earlier times, it was not like that. And in villages, in fact, a new trend even in cities is trying doing organic colors. So if you see the principal, you know, color, red that is used in Holi actually comes from the Tesu flower. The Tesu flower actually grows in clumps. It's called the flame of the forest because of its fiery red color and it is grown in the Palash tree, Palash tree, which is a flowering tree. It's also a medicinal tree. So the Tesu flower is also cooked. It's really great for health. It's cooling in properties. And then when you mix it with water and make color out of it, that's what we can use to play holy. In mostly in villages, in cities, you don't find this tree anymore. But in villages, people do exactly that. And what else is a nice way to use the colors? So all these colors are coming from flowers and herbs and fruits and vegetables. So even if you eat them by mistake or you ingest them or you put them on your pets or little kids, you're never going to get any allergies. Nobody's going to get sick. So green here is coming from mandy. You have turmeric and lemon making it yellowish and orangish. Tesu flower, remember I told you about Tesu. So Tesu is here making orange. Then we have beetroot. We can even use pomegranate and radish for red and indigo plant making the color blue of Krishna. So everything is organic. Most of them are literally Ayurvedic medicines. The next thing I want to talk to you about is how the festival is celebrated all over the country. So if you see predominantly the places that celebrate it is North India. North India is supposed to be like the hub, the heartland, the Braj Bhumi, which is all those places associated with Lord Krishna. This is where it is at its peak. Of course, then I'm going to talk to you about how it's celebrated in Anandpur Sahib in Punjab, in the hills of Uttarakhand. Then I'm going to talk a little bit about West and, you know, South India. And then we will do East as well. So it's celebrated in its own different way. Every part of the country has a different way. So it's not just the colors that we play, the Rangwali Holi. There's a whole lot more. So in Braj Bhumi, which is the land of Krishna, they start a month in advance, okay? It is really big. Holi is the event of the year. They start a month in advance and what do they do? They start off with a laddu holi where actually you won't believe it but they play with laddus and they eat it as prasad. Then there's also the full body holi. So the full holi, holi here you see there's Krishna and Radha. They are these actors playing the roles and there is flowers all around. So whether it's marigold or rose, they play with full or flowers. Then they also have Rangwali Holi, which is the Holi you and I know, which is with color. So this picture is very interesting. Here you will see that, you know, there are people from inside the temple, from the Krishna temple in Rindavan. And what do they do? They take these pichkaris with lots of water and they spray it all on the devotees. So it's literally symbolic of Lord Krishna inside the temple playing with his devotees outside. And this Holi is really, really big in Braj Bhumi. My, my personal favorite 
was the Lat Markoli. So the Lat Markoli starts in Barsana, which is the home of Radha. And then what do they do? They take Lathis, the women take Lathis and they beat up the men. So this is not like a literal beating up, it's symbolic. Okay. And what the joke is, is that the daughter-in-laws are fed for an entire month by the mother-in-laws to make them really strong so that they can beat up their husbands nice and good. And of course, do understand that this is all in fun. Nobody really beats, beats, beats up people. And the other great thing is, what do the men do to protect themselves? Well, they make these shields. So in earlier times, these shields used to be made out of leather and they would wear these big turbans to tie and take care of themselves. In Haryana, they have a different version of it, which is where the devars are beaten up by the bhabis. So the brother-in-laws are beaten up by the sister-in-laws. The main reason they're trying to do it is that they're trying to show that there is an equality between men and women and women are as strong as men. So going from Rajbhumi, I'm going north to Punjab and I take you to Anandpur Sahib. So Anandpur Sahib actually has a, a different name for Holi. They call it Hola Mahalla. Hola is actually the masculine form of Holi. And what do they do here? They're not playing with colors here, folks. They have martial arts festivals. So this was started in 1701 by Guru Gobind Singh. He was the one who came up with this idea that let's show our martial prowess. So you have men who are, you know, doing horsemanship. Then there are these mock fights. There is this whole tradition of Gatka, which is very, very specific to, you know, martial arts in the Sikh community, the warrior tribes, especially the Nihangs. They are really, really good at it. And Gatka also has a spiritual side to it. If you look it up and see, it's not just the warfare it is also a spiritual angle to it and also you know none of these fights are for real these are all mock fights there's archery there's a whole lot of things that happen in fact you'll see this little boy here he's practicing too so they really start young when they start playing for uh, sorry preparing for this festival now the very very interesting thing that i found was that in uttarakhand they have three types of holi so they have something called khadi holi where everybody stands and play then they have a betri holi where everybody sits and plays so here you have a scene of people playing with these gandhi topis in uttarakhand and my favorite was the mahila holi so mahila holi is for the women folk they wear these beautiful white and red sarees and they go down the streets uh, singing and you know making the atmosphere so jovial and I really really liked it that there's a special special holy for women. Now let's go to Rajasthan. So in Udaipur what do they do? The royal family they take out a procession they sit on these horses and camels and elephants and the whole city pretty much comes alive and comes to see this and in Jaipur they actually have an elephant festival. So what do they do? They dig up these elephants. They come from different places. So look at look at this one here. This elephant is actually wearing panjab or anklets. And look at the paint that goes into, you know, dressing up the elephant and the robes. It's really beautiful. It's a sight to see. And people come from far and wide. And the lucky elephants, the ones who dressed very well, actually get prizes. Now I'll take you a little bit to the east of the country. So if you go to the northeast, we have a festival in Manipur called Yao Sang. And Yao Sang festival, what do they do? They mix the Hindu traditions of mainland India with the traditions of the northeast. They have their own mix. They have their own unique dances. They have their own unique songs. And it's really a very unique way that they celebrate Holi. In Bengal, what do they do? Holi is big in Bengal. So remember, we have Basant Panchmi that starts 40 days before Holi. So that's the time Bengal actually kicks off, especially Shanti Niketan. So they call it Basant Utsav, which actually continues from Basant Panchmi right up till Holi. And in Shanti Niketan, which was founded by Rabindranath Tagore, they have, uh, you know, lots of song and dance, yellow being the predominant color, like you see here. And they have, uh, most of these compositions are done by Gurudev and they really incorporate it and make the atmosphere really jovial and then the day after holi is dol purnima in most parts of east india so what do they do in bengal they have these dolis 
okay so dolies if you look carefully dolies are also called palkis we can also call them palquins in english for people who don't know so they take lord krishna in these dolies and they do a dol jatra where they actually go down the streets they have processions there's a lot of song and dance now dol jatra is also done in bengal not just in bengal but also in odisha so in jagannath puri they'll take you know uh, lord jagannath along with his siblings on this jatra and also in assam what they do is instead of lighting the holika bonfire what they do is they make a doli out of hay and out of the crops that they just harvested and they burn that on holika dahan okay so the same tradition something similar in terms of taking the doli on a procession actually takes place even in parts of maharashtra where they take the doli around the holy bonfire so there's so many various combinations of the traditions isn't it in maharashtra another tradition they have is the one of dahi handi so this is a, a janamashtami tradition you'll think but no it's also done for uh, holy in certain places even certain places in gujarat so they have the dahi handi and what do these boys do they make these complicated pyramids and they go try and go up right to the dahi handi which is at a very big height and they the dahi is inside a handi which is an earthen vessel and they try and catch hold of it again it's a symbol of you know lord krishna because lord krishna loves dahi so and buttermilk so this little tradition and this play or a game call it what you will is centered around lord krishna in goa they actually have a proper spring festival it's a 14 day festival it's called shiv motsav and the great thing about goa is you know goa is famous for carnivals well this is a different kind of a carnival so they have processions where people have this song and dance very vibrant costumes have a look at it and people come from far to come and see it because it's a very very unique festival they are actually celebrating warriors in this festival now in south india i told you they don't really play holi the way with colors right that the way we do in the north so what do they do they normally i told you celebrate rang panchmi there are lot of pujas that go on but the one place in south india where they love playing with colors is hampi so hampi they have the ruins of the vijayanagar empire and they have uh, you know people uh, playing uh, holi there with colors lot of foreigners come especially to pay ho play holi with the locals so that is really big the rangwali holi in hampi and finally i wanted to talk about kerala so they don't really celebrate holi but they have a name for holi called ukuli in konkani and parts of certain temples like the gosripuram temple i believe they have this tradition where they take um, you know turmeric water which is which is called manjal kuli and they spray it over the body because turmeric water you know it is so good like all these colors that we use they all go through your pores into your skin the skin absorbs it and it is so beneficial for the skin now i want to tell you a little bit about some other places in the world where holi is celebrated so holi the way you and i know is celebrated in different parts of the world where indians went and you know they set up home so if you see this country of ours india and then you know people travel to africa so south africa and mauritius you'll see people celebrating holi in the uk and then in canada and the us and then of course australia and new zealand there isn't a place where indians haven't been but especially if you know that people from bihar and up migrated in large numbers to mauritius and the caribbean and parts of south africa so their traditions of holi are pretty much very very close to what up and bihar as in terms of holi and what a big surprise for me was that you know they are places in, in uh, abroad where they actually have electronic music festivals so i found out that in bosnia there is a holi music festival i'm not sure it ha actually happens on holi holi and also in brazil so a friend of mine sent me this picture from brazil where they have these music dance festivals because the whole world has caught on to what a lot of fun holi is now our neighbors have their own holi traditions okay so if you go to nepal it's called rang panchmi again in nepal it's celebrated in a big way just like you know like us with colors and things but what is very different in nepal is they also have this concert concert idea big music festivals happen in nepal on holi these big top artists come and perform and it's a really big deal even foreigners come specially for these music concerts in nepal 
Now, a thing I found very interesting is that in Pakistan, before India and Pakistan had partition, they used to have wrestling matches or kushti. There was this whole tradition of kushti during Holi, and men would dress up like gods, and they would have these jhankis or processions in the villages. And now, since 2016, the Pakistan government has actually started this new rule saying any local government or institution can declare a holiday for Holi. Interesting. I'm sure a lot of us didn't know that. And this picture is going to look like India to you, but actually it is not. This is a Songkran festival in Thailand. It is the new year for them and it's considered very auspicious for them. You know, you see these elephants throwing water at people and vice versa because throwing water is considered very, very auspicious. And a picture that I really liked was all these grown up people playing with water guns or pichkaris. There's not a single child here. So in India, we mostly associate pichkaris with kids. But here you have a whole bunch of adults playing with water guns. Now, speaking of water guns and pichkaris, I wanted to highlight that, you know, in earlier times, they used to have pichkaris made out of bamboo. And I'm sure if you try to find out, we can try and make an eco-friendly pichkari for ourselves as well. And then there are some pictures I found of a silver pichkari made out of real silver in olden times. And of course, steel pichkaris, which we can buy from the market, they would last much longer, won't get spoiled and they are not using plastic. Another activity I thought the kids could do, so on Holi you play with colors, right? But what about an activity before Holi where actually we can make our own colors? Kids can get together and I'm sure schools are really propagating it now. I hear of kids trying to make organic color all the time. So why don't we make our own color? So what are the different ways we can make our own color? We can use flowers. So here I have different kinds of marigold. We have rose petals. We use neem. And of course, mehndi we can use as dry powder. And haldi, I already showed you turmeric. And you can get brown and black water with coffee and tea. And there are a whole lot of other things if you look it up, which are all really nice for you. In fact, I made this thing at the back with my mother. So we used beetroot, we used haldi and some of the colors I used food coloring. And before I leave, I just wanted to give you a little word of caution. All of us know these things, but you know, it's sometimes you get so carried up, you forget about it. But you know, let's not play with mud. Let's not play dirty. Let's try and be organic. Let's play with nice colors, especially, you know, these metallic colors that you get in the market. They are so, so, so harmful for your skin. And you know, covering your head is very important. Putting lots of oil or cream, making sure that you're oiled up because all the colors will take some time to get off. And then uh, be uh, kind to other people. You know, let's not force people. Let's not throw balloons on people who don't really want to play with us. So let's be safe and let's be very conscious citizens and have a really nice and very quiet <laughs> holy if possible. Let's not be very, very loud as well. So I bid you goodbye. And I wish you all a very, very, very happy Holi. Do leave me comments and tell me what you liked about the stories today and if there's anything that you'd like to add. So I'll see you the next time. I hope you have fun. Bye-bye.